Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule. Now, why we must return to the moon immediately. Roll tape! Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule, and today we're going to reveal new discoveries concerning the moon, tell you about the case of the dead son who returned in the guise of a chicken, investigate the case of the mysterious minor league baseball sluggers, and critique the 1945 mystery, The Great Flammarion, starring Eric von Stroheim and Mary Beth Hughes, and cover other segments, time of course permitting. But first, new discoveries concerning our moon. Now here it is, our moon. Back in 1996, December, the Clementine probe found signs of ice at the south polar cap of the moon. However, skeptics said it was some sort of an optical illusion, something akin to a mirage of water in the desert. Then, in March of 1998, another probe, the Lunar Prospector, found indications of ice at both the north and south polar caps of the moon. And finally, just recently, in the journal Science, the final report is in, and it reveals the true extent of ice on the moon. Ice exists at both the northern and southern polar caps, and the amount is overwhelming, at least. 6.6 billion tons of ice on our moon. Now, that would provide enough water for 1,000 lunar colonists to subsist on for a mind-boggling 10,000 years, or a colony of 100,000 to exist there for a century. And that's not just the full extent of that ice. I suggest there may be other pockets of ice on the moon that have been deposited in deep-seated craters that have not been exposed to the sun. Now, where did this ice come from? Apparently from comets that bombarded the moon and brought with them ice. Now, I'm very discouraged with our space program. Of course, once the Russians got started with first Sputnik and then the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin, we were galvanized into action. And President John F. Kennedy got us to go to the moon. He said we'd get there by the end of the decade, that is, by the end of the 1960s. A number of scientists were skeptical. They didn't think we could do it. But he motivated them. He showed that we could do this. We could achieve this project. And we landed there for the first time, July 20th, 1969. And our Apollo project was in full swing. However, it was abruptly ended after Apollo 17 landed there in 1972. Why? because the Russians could not keep pace. Basically, their equivalent of our space director, his name was Sergei Korolev, fell into political disfavor, and with his ouster, we had the collapse of the Soviet space program. So they no longer offered us a challenge, so Congress myopically cut the budget, canceled Apollos 18, 19, and 20, and they might have found this ice at that time. Then we've gone into a retrogressive stage where we're dealing with uh, the Skylab and the space shuttle mission and now the wasteful International Space Station. Now back in the 1950s, the rocket magazines always showed that we'd first establish a space station around the Earth and from there use that as a launching point to go to the moon. But we showed you didn't need the space station, that it was needless. We could go directly to the moon. Now we're tinkering with this International Space Station It's already cost us $23 billion. Congress is now being asked to fork over another $660 million to the Russians who are not keeping up their end of the bargain. Uh, First of all, it's a three-part station. Two of the parts will go up in the latter part of 1998. But the most crucial part, the service module, is the Russians' responsibility, and it may not get up until the year 2000. They just are falling completely behind. But we don't need a space station. 
We should return to the moon because we may find life there from two different sources. First, the fact that the comets deposited ice there means they may have also deposited biota, bioorganisms. Bio when the Giotto space probe analyzed spectroscopically the Halley's Comet in 1986, it found evidence of organic matter, bacterial matter, and viruses. In other words, the rudiments of life. And we have to assume that all comets are similarly constituted. So in that ice, there may be organic matter. And in some areas where some of it is melted and pooled, there may be low elemental life forms proving we're not alone in the universe. And another discovery from 1996 in Romania, then the so-called Movile K, for those of you taking notes, that's capital M-O-V-I-L-E, biologists discovered for the first time land creatures that did not depend in any way on photosynthesis. In this cave, which is sealed off without any air or light, they found spiders, worms, and scorpions they had never seen before, existing basically on hydrogen sulfide, indirectly ingested from bacteria. Now, I'm not saying we're going to find spiders, scorpions, and worms in lunar caves, but certainly some of them have been sealed off with some type of gases, and we should expect to find some intriguing forms of life. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to say we'll find bathing beauty, such as depicted in the 1954 sci-fi movie uh, Catwomen of the Moon, but we should find some type of life within the lunar caves. So it's imperative that we get there and prove we're not alone in the universe. It's also possible it could mean the salvation of the human race. Because once we've established a lunar base, astronomers can set up a ring of a, a telescopes. And without atmospheric interference, without light pollution, they will have a clear-cut view of incoming asteroids and comets that might be targeting planet Earth. And that will give us lead time, valuable lead time, that would allow us to divert those incoming comets and asteroids that are headed for the Earth and save our civilization. So it's imperative, absolutely imperative, that we return to the moon immediately. And of course, once we have a lunar base, it would be much easier to go to Mars and look for signs of life there also. So I say, scrap the International Space Station. Let's get back to the moon immediately. Yes. Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes. 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 <laughs>